the title of this talk is Imagining a Future of Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math for Latinas in, STEM, in, in the community. I want to think about how and which ways we can involve and um, think about including people who are on the historically marginalized and imagine what would a future of doing science be like for these people. So overall, what's happening with Latinos or Latinas in STEM? Um, in the K through 12, we see a steep decrease of interest from elementary to middle school. And therefore, my study focuses on fifth graders right about when they're transitioning to middle school. And Latinas have always been identified as the lowest motivation identity development. And that's why I focus on the specific group. And um, just as a contextual, just to wrap around the context, I use Latina to talk about Latina and Latinos from the categories of the National Science Foundation, but particularly the participants I work with identify as Mexican American. Um, and in higher education, we see very low rates of graduation rates for um, Hispanics and Latinos, and even further smaller rates at 3.8% for female, Hispanic, and Latinos. And so this year, I've been involved in a couple of community engagement activities to collect my data. Um, I've run two family science nights where families come together and build drones. We had one at 539 people and 54 people. I've been running an after school club since September, which is ending this week. So I have 23 two hour weekly sessions and I've had undergraduate research assistants who volunteered over 140 hours in four different classrooms. And from this community engagement, I've collected various amounts of data, including video data. So I have about over 100 hours of video data from home, school, and after school. I've interviewed the teachers and the students, and I've also done a pre-post um, science identity survey of the whole fifth grade for the school I'm working at. And so the first research study asks, where are the scientists in fifth grade? And are there any gender differences in science identity or interests among fifth grade students? So I collected a survey that was pre and post. So the post I literally just got Friday, so I can't really report that out. I literally just scanned that this morning. Um, with measures on interest in science, science participation, and future science careers. Um, and if you're into stats, t-tests, and OLS regressions. So my preliminary findings from just the pre-surveys, there was no statistical difference between gender in science interest, participation, or valuing science. However, the difference, the only statistical difference I found is Girls select higher interest in wanting to be a doctor, veterinarian, or a dentist compared to boys, even when you control interest in science and seeing science as helpful. And so future studies um, and directions, I actually want to take the post data and see, does that transition from fifth grade to sixth grade still hold and that decrease in interest in science still hold for girls? And part of my other study is designing a family science night. So I've been thinking about what are the design principles of designing a family science night to engage families and students in science. There's not a lot of research about how to actually design and execute these programs. A lot of them have been pretty, um, I would say, haphazardly thrown together probably a week or two before, but there's no empirical data yet about how to actually design for these type of events. And so we did some surveys with the participants, uh, meeting notes from our team and interviews with the stakeholders and we did some A-B testing which means we were comparing and contrasting some of our prototypes with some uh, kids that we borrowed from um, basically my neighbors, um, three sessions, and using design-based research, A-B testing content analysis of our notes to kind of understand how do we design a successful family science night. And so just overall basic um, breath, 95% of participants were very satisfied with the event, ranging from very unsatisfied to very satisfied. And these are some of the emerging design principles of family science nights I've been thinking about. So thinking about who is available, who is there to support as a human resource, and how do we prepare volunteers um, to help out with events like these. And this idea of science capital, where how do we engage parents and uh, family members and kids with the practices of science, talking about science, asking questions about science, or thinking about science skills and content. And this idea that came out of our notes was everything is based on the user experience, user experience being the kids and the families. We wanted certain things to happen, but on the other receiving end, it didn't happen, but it was still a successful event. So how do we think about, how do we cater and think about the user experience? And also think about user experience flow. How, what is the sequence of events 
that need to occur for a family science night to be scaffolded for some sort of learning. And we did, like I said, we did some A-B testing to look at whether or not what type of instructions would be helpful. And we found that structured instructions, oh, that rhymed. Structured instructions are a lot better than unstructured instructions, which is actually contrary to what most people think in science ed, that needs to be open-ended. But in this particular case from our A-B testing, we saw that structured instructions were actually leading to better outcomes. And so the final study that I've been um, conducting is how do fifth grade Mexican-American girls see themselves during science identity work as they cut across from home school and after school. And basically taking all that video data, all those interviews, and thinking about a critical ethnographic case study. So thinking about beyond just describing culture, but how can science and culture be used to transform a school, a system, as well as a community. And so preliminary findings, I've been thinking about encoding identity resources, which are thinking about ways of leverage and recognized resources can result in new identities in STEM. So these two processes of leveraging a resource are, is from another setting and recognizing that as a legitimate way of doing science. I wish I could talk a little bit more about the actual data, but um, if you want, you can talk to me after. And that's all I have. Thank you so much. Yes. When you do the longitudinal study, like you ordered the longitudinal study, mm -hmm. what, what do you think will be the effect of the, of the separation between the interest of the males versus the uh, Mm -hmm. So most likely, what I'm so which longitudinal, the quantitative or the qualitative, uh, or just in general. In general, everything of the literature has looked at um, if the status quo about how science is taught and the ways in which we recognize girls and particularly girls of color, we will see a steep drop from fifth grade to sixth grade. However, if we're able to think about better and more equitable ways of teaching primarily in fifth grade, we'll see that what we call a science identity close. We'll actually see boys and girls identifying with science if we're able to teach in a more equitable uh, way. Fifth to sixth. So I expect if I were to go back and follow up with these sixth graders, um, I am a, I'm, from the literature, I'm assuming most of the girls who are hope are not in my after school program will will have a decrease in science interest, but I'm not particularly sure. That's just a hypothesis for now. Thank you. <laughs>